or any other white men in this land, there lived a brave and fearless Indian boy who saved his people from a cruel and evil magician. That boy was Hiawatha. Hiawatha lived with his grandmother, Nokomis, by the shore of the great sea called Gitchigumi. And Nokomis it was who taught him the secrets of the forest. Hiawatha learned quickly, and soon he could run swiftly between the trees without making a sound. He could track the deer to its drinking hole and surprise the beaver in its lodge. And then one day, Nokomis gave Hiawatha a bow of ash and arrows of oak tipped with flint and said, I am hungry, my grandson. Go into the forest and shoot a deer for me. All the people of the village praised Hiawatha the hunter. The men called him Soengataha, Strongheart. They called him Mangotesi, Lionheart. And they said, Perhaps Hiawatha is the great warrior for whom we have been waiting. Perhaps it is he who will rid us of Megasagwan, the pearl feather, evil magician of the swamp. Hiawatha stood up. He looked at his people and said, I will seek the cruel Megasagwan. I will drive him from our land forever. Then did Hiawatha's people shout with joy, and they feasted and sang. Next morning, Hiawatha began to build his chimon, the canoe in which he would paddle through the dismal swamp to the wigwam of the evil Pearl Feather. Of cedar boughs I'll build me first a framework. With larch tree roots I'll bind the boughs together. Now my canoe with birch bark I shall cover. With fir trees palm I'll seal the seams and edges. With berry juice I'll paint my sweat canoe. Hiawatha set out. His chimon sailed the black swamp water where dwelt Dahinda the bullfrog and Kennebec the snake. He sailed through rotting bulrushes while Sugima the mosquito sang and Shushuga the heron rose at his approach. Finally, he came in sight of the shining wigwam of Megasagwan the pearl feather. Hiawatha fitted an arrow to his bow. He shot it at the wigwam, calling, Come forth, Megasagwan. Come out and fight, evil one. Go home, Hiawatha. Go home to the women, coward. Then Hiawatha fitted another arrow to his bow and shot it straight at Megasagwan. Oh, my shirt is made of magic wampum. No arrow can pierce it. Then Megasagwan seized his club and rushed at Hiawatha. Backward and forward, the great fight raged, all day and long into the afternoon. Toward dusk, Hiawatha was growing exhausted. He had but three arrows left in his quiver, and he had not succeeded in wounding the magician. Weak from the many blows of the evil pearl feather, Hiawatha was about to give up the fight. When, on a branch near him, a woodpecker cried, Aim your arrows at the tuft of hair on Megasagwan's head, Hiawatha, for there alone can he be wounded. Quickly, Hiawatha took one of his remaining arrows and fitted it to his bow. Sing! Oh! Hiawatha took his second arrow. Sing! Oh! And his third. Sing! Oh! And that was the end of Megasagwan, the pearl feather, evil magician of the swamp. Hiawatha loaded his chimon with trophies from the magician's wigwam and set out for home. And Hiawatha, the Indian boy, became a great hero of his people.